Hello everybody. Uh, thank you Carl for that introduction and lovely to see so many familiar faces there on the right and such a wonderful uh, selection of countries from all over the world. That's wonderful. I myself am based in Barcelona in Spain by the way and it's four o'clock here in the afternoon so I've just had lunch. Um, this webinar, we're going to be trying out a number of things during it, including video. Uh, we'll have to see how we go with that, but it's partly an experiment, and we'll talk about that towards the end. Um, you can see the title then of the of the workshop is Teaching Online the Key Ingredients, and there's a bit of a food theme going on here. I don't know about you, but I love food. I love eating, and I really enjoy cooking. So we'll be referring back to food as well regularly during the talk. Um, okay. I'm hoping everybody can hear me okay. It's not too loud, too soft. Is that okay? You can hear me? Just give me a quick yes so I can tell that you're still in the room. Yes, okay, excellent. Good. All right, um, you'll see just before we start, um, I'm doing a quick poll to see how much experience you may have with online teaching. In the bottom right hand side, just under the list of attendees, there's a thing called Poll 2 and it says there how much online teaching experience do you have. So if you could just click, you've got a couple of options. You can see lots, some, none, what's online teaching and no vote. Well that'll probably be what I can see. So you can just scroll down and choose one of those options. I'll give you a moment to do that. Okay, so some seems to be winning at the moment. It's updating as, as we speak. All right, so yeah, some and none. And I'm glad to see nobody's chosen the What's Online Teaching option. And that, that is, is think of your favorite recipe or your favorite dish, and then tape, type in the name of the dish, and then three ingredients or three things that are in the dish. OK, and please also add the name of the country. So I'm going to do one first. I'm going to put the name of a dish, and then three things that's inside it. You can see my example there, paella, which is a Spanish dish and it's made with rice and seafood and you could put peas in it. So let's see what we come up with. Okay, so you can, you know, stepping back a little bit, you can probably see what we're doing here. We've started, we're doing a synchronous online session. I'm sort of your teacher. And I've basically given you a little task which is related to the topic. And the topic in our case is ingredients and food and so on. So you can see how you could use an activity like this with your own students. If you're teaching online, if you're running a video conferencing session with your students like we're doing at the moment, uh, you could choose a topic and you could get them to brainstorm or provide vocabulary on whatever it may, may be. So in your case, probably related to business, uh, teaching business English. So maybe a topic like, I don't know, negotiation or whatever it is you teach. teaching. Business I think English. we often overlook when teaching online is celebrating achievements. So let's imagine, we keep the comic strip example going because it was not one that came up. Um, your students have created dialogues using a comic strip program. Well, let's celebrate that. Let's share what they've done. Let's share it not just within the group, online, but let's share it with another class, or let's put it on the school website, or if we're teaching young learners, let's let the parents have a look um, at what at what has been created. Um, and there's some sort of, you know, um, acknowledgement of the work that's gone in software and the liveware. And what I want to do for the rest of the session is share a couple of activities that you can use in teaching online in any, it doesn't matter what subject, business English or young learners or whatever it may be. Um, their activity types, really. Um, but I think the first thing I want to make clear is when we talk about teaching online, for it really to work and for learning to take place, there need to be two key things there. And those two things are interaction and communication, because we're teaching language. OK, thank you, Roy. Julie wants you to slow down. Am I speaking too fast? OK. All right, if Julie is a native speaker and having problems, then apologies to everybody else. I get a bit carried away. Thank you. Please do give me more feedback like that. It's very helpful. Okay, let me slow down. Um, okay, so two key things here when we're talking about teaching online and about activities, interaction and communication. Communication, because we're talking about language. Um, interaction, now what do I mean by interaction? 
What do I mean? I, interaction, interactive. This activity is interactive. This is something that we hear all the time. But there, for me, interaction is something, and it seems like for a lot of people teaching online, it's something different. Keeping students involved, says Fernaz. Yeah, students have to take part, says Alicia. Doing things together, collaboration. Students participate. Yeah, exchanging information, two-way communication, exchanging messages. Oh, great. Well, we're all on the same page here. Good. What I'm trying to say is that, to me, an interactive ex exercise is not a sentence on a website, and then you drag in the missing verb. And you often hear people talking about how this is interactive, and we've got these interactive exercises. And this is not interaction. You're not interacting with anything. You're dragging words around a screen. You're interacting with your mouse. There we go. OK. So now I want to just quickly describe a number of activities for different skills, uh, different language skills. Uh, the first one, then, is reading. Um, the skill of reading, there's a very nice activity that I like particularly, which is called Five Clicks. And the idea is that you, uh, your students are all, you can do this synchronously or asynchronously. Send students to a website. Let's take an example. Let's imagine that you're working on the topic of something like um, endangered animals. Okay, So you send people along to the... Uh, I don't know, the site of the cheetah on the National Geographic website. So everybody starts on the same page, the cheetah page. And from there, students can click five times and explore away from that page five steps, five clicks. And they need to make a note of each page that they visit and, let's say, one important thing that they learn on that page. So they've taken the kind of five steps, and then they need to summarize all of that information and share it with the group. So the idea is really everybody will go off in different directions, and they will take their five steps or five clicks, depending on what they're interested in. Uh, they'll, they'll read the information, because you have to read the web page, scan it, find one thing or two things. You can, you can set the task as you like. And then they have to bring all that information, put it together, and then share it with the group. 